RuneScape is many things to many people, but one aspect which never gets spread up enough is the soundtrack. When RuneScape 2 released in 2004, 150 music tracks were released alongside it. Today, in RuneScape 3, that number has increased almost tenfold, with 1,300 unique pieces of music included in the game. And that's not even including the extra 130 tracks composed exclusively for old school RuneScape. In a world where entire game soundtracks are usually only a few hours long at most, it shouldn't come as a surprise that Jagex holds the Guinness World Record for most original pieces of music in a video game. And if that accolade wasn't enough, recent years have seen part of the RuneScape soundtrack performed by the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, reimagined by none other than James Hannigan, a multi-award winning British composer who has worked on Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings and my favorite movie of them all, Super Smash Bros. Despite all of this, I think the music in RuneScape doesn't get enough appreciation. Outside the occasional Reddit thread where people say it's underappreciated, there really isn't that much discussion about it. After all the incredible work put into the soundtrack, how many people still play with the sound off? We all know the classic RuneScape tunes, but just how many have you never listened to? Sturgeon's Law is an old adage that says that 90% of everything is crap. I am not trying to say that every song in RuneScape is a masterpiece, trust me we're gonna see some real deuces, but even if only 10% of the soundtrack was good, that's still over a hundred great pieces of music at our fingertips. And let me tell you, when RuneScape music is good, it's good. Hello everyone, my name is Will Misted and I've been making videos on RuneScape for over 10 years now. Beyond that, I've always wanted to make my videos as immersive to the world of RuneScape as possible. That means the music has always been a big part of my creative process too. I made my first story-driven video in 2012, which is also when I started paying closer attention to the soundtracks. Just as much as a script, music tells its own story, so you can't just slap any piece of music in there and call it a day. You have to find the most complimentary track you can and, in such a vast library of songs, finding the perfect music ain't that easy. Alongside this soundtrack, Jan does not get enough credit for tirelessly putting up as much of the OST on YouTube as possible. I've lost track of the hours I've spent browsing RuneScape music on his channel, but what I've never lost track of is the magnificence of it all. From the clear classics to the hidden gems buried within. I don't want to sidetrack too much here, so if you're interested in my personal top 10, check the pinned comment under this video. And hey, while you're down there, why not leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already? Music is designed to evoke feelings from us. And in a world as large and diverse as Gilanor, the soundtrack need to be just as large and diverse. Whether you're fishing in the guild, trading in the grand exchange, or killing Telos at a ridiculous enrage for some meaningless internet points, the music for these situations reflect and enhances the scenarios you find yourself in. Take Elvin Lilly from the Ithel district of Prifthinus. A rise legend from the Legends Guild. Elder daughter from the emotional ending of Children of Ma. Or Zamorak returns from the Battle of Lumbridge. Funnily enough, one of my favorite tracks in the game was actually arranged by a player. Max Raidner Variation, composed by, believe it or not, a player named Max Raidner, was the winning entry in the 2013 competition to compose a new version of RuneScape's main theme. 
If you want to listen to it in-game, it can be unlocked at the Fallout Door Party Room. As I mentioned before, it doesn't seem like many people actually listen to the soundtrack. That was just a gut feeling though from my own experiences and 16 years of seeing almost no one talking about it. This isn't evidence though. Unfortunately, there aren't many official numbers for this either. The audio team didn't know and any other sources I contacted didn't have exact data. To try and get some sort of answer to this, I conducted a straw poll and posted it to both Twitter and Reddit. Far from ideal, I know, but it's good enough for a ballpark figure. After 973 player votes, it seemed my suspicion had some credibility. A whole 44% of players never turned the sound on. 40% were turned it on occasionally, depending on their mood or what content they were playing. But only 16% actually kept the music on most of the time. But let's be real, this shouldn't be surprising, right? You could have probably guessed it was something like that, but the question is why? Well, as one idea, consider that RuneScape has spent the last 10 years pivoting towards community-angled content. Instead of fighting for skilling resources, they want players to share them, to relax and chat while skilling. As a result, RuneScape is now a kind of complicated cookie clicker. Even Jagex says that RuneScape is the perfect second screen game on their Steam description, and I don't know about you, but I don't keep the sound on while playing cookie clicker. If that's the case, then it's sad to see that so much music is hidden behind a wall that discourages active gameplay in key content like skilling. It's not like Jagex ever half hearts the music either. The audio team all works full time on sound development for Jagex, dedicating literal years of their lives making music for the game that only 16% of players regularly listens to. But acting like people only hear RuneScape music in game would be a huge disservice to the reach that it has. As I said at the start, there was a live orchestral performance in the place of the night before for RuneFest 2018. A friggin' orchestra! How many games can say they've had that? But beyond that, they've started putting the soundtrack on other platforms such as Spotify and you can buy CDs and even vinyls of some of the songs in the soundtrack. I don't know about you, but I do like being able to hold my music. And if that's not enough, you can find pretty much any track you want on YouTube already. Sea Shanty 2 has over 2 million views, only half of which are for me. And heck, just look at the audio team performing live at RuneFest each year. Now that's dedication. So far I've said a lot about the music in RuneScape without actually looking into it that much. Let's fix that. Jagex refers to their music as eclectic. There's a lot of variety to it and a wide array of influences and styles at play. Once again reflecting the gigantic diversity you find in Gilenor itself. Most games will usually find its identity in a single genre and stick to it. RuneScape sees genres as just another tool to use, not a box to fit itself in. As an example, while RuneScape 3 definitely has a preference towards orchestral pieces, you can also find these. Not my first thought for medieval video game music at least. And you wouldn't think these come from the same game as... And just to show off that variety a little more... And hey, one of the J-Mods managed to sneak in a recording of a broken blender. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Hopefully you noticed one or two differences between those songs. The variety between the music is so fundamentally connected to the game itself. If RuneScape was just a bog standard fantasy MMO, then we likely wouldn't have anything like it. Even though RuneScape is classified as a medieval fantasy game, it's far more of a fantasy than people give it credit for. When RuneScape 2 was released in early 2004, there really wasn't anything else like it. Even World of Warcraft was still in development and, and wouldn't be released for another 6 months. The idea of a sandbox MMO was still foreign. The internet was nowhere as prolific as it is these days and most games were designed as linear experiences with a strict storyline to follow. With the technical limitations of the early 2000s, any game designer would say you're mad for being ambitious enough to do anything more than a simple linear game. But that ambition, hell, the risk, 
that the Garo brothers took when making RuneScape is probably why it ended up being the tremendous success that it was. RuneScape became the place to go hang out with your friends, fight each other with all of these weird and wonderful weapons and armor, and get those serotonin drops from watching the numbers rise on your virtual levels. You could explore this large world brimming with, uh, 52 quests, all from your browser, for free! Well, at least some of it was free. RuneScape really needed to hook in the players as quickly as possible. The world it offered was vast and full of adventure, but you really needed to sell that early to make people want to explore the world. You needed to convince them not just that RuneScape was going to be an adventure, but one of the best adventures they'd ever play. And while dialogue tells a story, music does too. The responsibility for this task was given to one of RuneScape's longest standing JMods a whole 17 years ago in 2003 when RuneScape 2 was still being made. And what composer Ian Taylor or Mod Ian presented would soon be the soundtrack, the theme to thousands upon thousands of childhoods. Escape Original was the first ever theme song that played on the login screen back in 2004. Like all other Escape named songs, these were meant to introduce the player to the world of Gilenor and immediately fill them with that sense of adventure. Loud, bombastic and memorable, Escape Original was heavily inspired by movie soundtracks that sought to evoke those same feelings like Star Wars and Superman. Back in those days, creating music for games like RuneScape wasn't easy. Files had to be under 60 kilobytes, which is insane to think about now. For reference, the music you listen to these days will be anywhere from 128 to 320 kilobytes per second. This meant that the music had to use as little as possible and err on the short side. In fact, the RuneScape main theme was originally three times as long but had to be split up to fit into the game. They were released as Escape Original, an unknown track, and Trinity, hence the name. Unfortunately, the second song is lost. However, up until as late as in September 2019, an unreleased soundtrack only known as Game Intro 1 could be found hidden in the game cache. It sounds old and unfinished, but given its date, suggesting it had been made in 2003, it could mean this is the lost brother of the main theme. The technical limitation of 60 kilobytes is likely what led to early RuneScape music becoming so melody-driven. The focus on strong melodic structure helped make these songs so memorable, the ones that would get stuck in your head and still be there even decades later. Most tracks from this era aren't much more than a good melody and a simple chord progression, and honestly, I think the music is better for it. Originally, in the early 2000s, music played from the sound card of a PC sounded different to the ones in a Mac. Jagex wanted to make sure that their songs sounded the same on all machines, so they purchased a general MIDI collection, a library of pre-tuned computer instruments, and ones that would make sure different users wouldn't hear different things. This original MIDI collection ended up being used for years, and still is to this day. Old school RuneScape still composes their music using this library, even if the background technology has clearly advanced since then. Obviously, we can handle songs with much bigger file sizes these days, so the tracks can be much more detailed and much, much longer. Pay close attention to the following songs, see what similarities there are, but also keep an eye out for the differences. While the old media collection certainly makes a song sound runescape-y, the feel definitely extends beyond that. After all, you wouldn't say that any of the orchestral reimaginings don't sound like runescape anymore, right? Now, I'm not versed in music theory at all, so this is a question I'm not able to look too deeply into. Luckily, I have other people to help write my scripts. You'll find that a lot of early RuneScape music uses a 3-4 time signature, which is often associated with medieval times due to a lot of historical pieces of music using this signature. 3-4 makes the piece feel more dancey, like a waltz, and makes the song feel faster paced than the 4-4 most modern songs are written in. 
A few songs are also written in 6-8, which is a slightly faster paced version of 3-4. Obviously, with a variety of situations RuneScape music is composed for, all sorts of time signatures are used. 4-4 and 2-4 show up more frequently for battles and marches, for example. But if you look back at some of the most nostalgic songs people remember from RuneScape, there's a good chance you'll see it's written in 3-4. Who knows, maybe 3-4 is the other part of what makes a song sound runescape -y. Okay, enough technical stuff. We don't really have the time to get into what time signatures are for those who've never heard of them, so feel free to look them up if you're interested, or relax and take solace in the fact that we're never bringing them up again. On the topic of bringing things up again, however, Scape Original may have established a RuneScape theme as we know it, but that's not the whole story. Scape Original enjoyed a year of glory as a login screen soundtrack, but for many, this wasn't the theme of their childhood. RuneScape was about to seriously take off. Peaking in 2006 and 2007, RuneScape would go down in history as the most popular free MMO in the world, and one piece of music released in 2005 would carry the game through its prime. Scape Main was an exciting new version of the main theme. Even though it was released in 2005, it was still made with the infamous MIDI collection, making it sound like another track from 1995, and yet it accomplished everything it set out to do. The music travels between a medieval palette of instruments to harp and synthesizers that contributes to that 90s aesthetics that many games on the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis employed, before it moves on to a more classical approach to the writing, a composition that would define and devour hours of your teenage life. The track truly captures the adventure you're about to experience. The hours of questing monsters you're about to kill, the cities you will visit. Scape Main is nothing short of a signature to the never-ending tale you will send your player character through. And it might be my nostalgia speaking, but to me, there is no other track among the game's 1,300 soundtracks that would better suit the RuneScape theme. The track's design has stayed consistent since 2005, but has faced several reworks since its original release. In 2009, it was updated to Scape Theme, a much more action-paced, complicated version, but in 2013, it took a whole new level with Scape Bold, which, much to its name, made the track sound very bold. The sound of real instruments defined the RuneScape theme for the first time, but not the last. In 2018, James Hennigan and the Philharmonic Orchestra made their full version and kept the ball rolling for a theme song that truly captures the sound of RuneScape. To me, the RuneScape theme doesn't just represent the journey that awaits you in-game. It also represents the journey it has taken in the real world. Jagex have gone from humble beginnings to the giant company it is these days, changing hands on several occasions but still keeping our favorite game alive and well. Looking at how the main theme has evolved over the past 15 years is amazing. Compare the concert performance to the simple tune that Mod Ian made under all those restrictions. If this is how much it has grown over the past few years, then I absolutely cannot wait to see it continue to evolve in the years, the decades, going forward. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm really glad I could highlight one of my favorite aspects of this game. With a lot of negativity going around on social media with MTX and all, I think the game I've played for so many years deserves a moment in the spotlight for one of the things it truly does brilliantly. I want to give a huge shout out to Ian Taylor for providing the information I needed to make this video, CS1 for the core writing, and Ro Panuganti for the review of Scape Main. As for you, the watcher, I'd love to hear your favorite tracks in the comment section below. I really need some good ones for the next videos coming up, my name is Will Miss It, and I'll see you all soon.